My earliest memories are of gender dysphoria. I felt lost and at times like I couldn't survive. It took until I was 31 to publicly come out as a transgender woman. Nothing has been the same since. While on the road, I've met gender variant people from all walks of life, all at various points in their journeys. Hearing their stories and then being able to relate myself to it is what I need right now. There weren't a lot of resources when I was younger, and I think that if I had been exposed to the knowledge I had as an adult that I did as a kid, maybe maybe I would have decided to transition earlier. But then there was also just a big part of my life that was swept up with being in a band. I was then on stage, and I realized I had no idea who I was. I had no idea how to talk to the audience, and I didn't know what I was doing up there, and all the joy had been sucked out of playing music for me. And having to live a compartmentalized existence like that was just killing me. I came out through Facebook. I came out as a queer person to my mother in the middle of a Walmart because I figured, like, if I'm gonna do it, she can't do anything to me in public, so I'm just gonna be like, Mom, I think I'm queer. And then I ran off to get some baloney. I came out on Facebook. I'm an only child to a single mom, so I sent my mom an email because I was too chicken to do it any other way. I haven't really told them at all, so I guess when my mom sees this, she'll <laughs> figure out about that. It's the process I'm still going through. I'm not out to my parents. I lost all my friends. The first person I said the words, I am a transsexual to, was my wife. We were at home, and Evelyn was asleep, taking a nap, and I said, I need to talk to you, I need to tell you something, and I just said, I'm a transsexual. I know she wasn't expecting me to say that, you know? I think she was expecting me to tell her I was having an affair or something like that, so she didn't necessarily know what what that meant or what my intentions behind that statement were. It was just like, I'm telling you this, and she accepted that I told her that, and then in her own time, she had to process that. The next person I told after Heather was, was my band. When I told the band, we were in the studio one day and we were talking about a song and I started getting really frustrated and I realized it was because I wasn't fully explaining myself like and where I was coming from. So it just came out, like I didn't plan on doing it right then, but I, I just, I told them. I remember she just like stood up and put her hands on her head and was just like, and just launched into it. And was like, this is what I've been going through for forever and I'm transgender and I, I'm, I plan on transitioning and I'm going to start living my life how I want to live it as Laura and just went in to that and I just remember like sitting there being like, wow, all right. Hold on, wait a second, what? <laughs> like, like, you know, dead quiet in the room and I, I felt like I drop kicked everyone in the face and I was freaking out. Like, what did I just do? <laughs> you know, like I didn't plan on doing this. This is, you know, all moving really quickly now and I was terrified. It took maybe a day to be like, okay, and just think about the future and it was just like, well, what's, what's it gonna be like? What's gonna happen? What's gonna be different? Is anything gonna be different? But really, like, James didn't miss a beat. Yeah, I mean, just nothing's changed. Laura called me and said, can I talk to you? I could instantly sense she was nervous and I knew it was something very important and she was talking very rapidly and she told me her story. I said that, you know, I'm transsexual, transgender, and I plan on transitioning. With a lot of people, when you hear something so personal to someone else, it's human that your initial thought may be, how is this going to affect me? And my initial fear was that I didn't want, I didn't want to lose my little family that, you know, that, that I had so been enjoying. And then I didn't want her to be hurt. I didn't want people to be unkind to her. But there was never a wavering. Not for one second did it change how I felt about her, other than it made me prouder. And I told her, I am with you every step of the way. Where did you grow up then? Uh, Toledo. Oh, right. Toledo, Toledo, Ohio. Yeah, a lot of religious uh, people in that town. Well, I expressed to my parents, I, I said that um, I really need, needed to get help. Um, and I told my father, I was like, I want to transition. He said, okay, son, <laughs> I'm gonna get you the help you need. And 
You know, a couple uh, months later, I ended up uh, in, a, in a gay reversion therapist office. So they, they took me in there and they were trying to turn me um, gay to straight, which I wasn't gay in the first place. So, yeah. I lost all, every single one of my friends except one who is still one of my very best friends today. But pretty much all my friends were gay women at the time. I don't think that they felt comfortable with what I was doing. And in a sense, they were like, what are you doing? So they just disassociated themselves from me. My family has actually been pretty cool. I've been really lucky on that front. Yeah, like my whole family has been really good about it. I called them and I told them over the phone, I'm a trans person and I'm fixing this. Like, I'm not gonna pretend to be someone I'm not any longer. And they were very discouraging. The coming out was terrifying, of course, not knowing how people were gonna react to it. But just once it was done, whether, didn't matter what their response was, once it was done, it was just like this humongous relief. I described it another time as almost if somebody had been holding my head underwater and then all of a sudden just let go, and all of a sudden I can pop up and breathe. It's, it's like that. Talking to my brother about coming out was it was kind of funny. I called him up and I was like, hey, Mark, I need to talk with you about something. And, you know, I'm coming out as trans and this is what I'm doing. The first thing that came to my mind, I was like, well, you know, I don't care. I still love you. You know, like you're my brother. And, he, you know, he was like so very supportive, even if he didn't necessarily understand. I was just like, well, yes, but no. <laughs> like, now you're just going to have to think of me as your sister, though. And I was thinking, like, God, that's just so weird. You know, like somebody that you've known as your brother for, at that point, it was like 26 years of my life, to now think that that's my sister. And like, I mean, it's still, it's, it's, it's just, it's a challenge. My brother's very imposing. He's like six, seven, six, eight, like highly trained in martial arts, um, just total all around badass, where I can tell when he's been introducing me now to his friends that like, he's looking at him like, go ahead, say something. <laughs> you know? If somebody ever did something to hurt her in front of me, I mean, that would be the last thing they ever did, but I'm not with her all the time. You know, like, I mean, I can't do something to protect her. I can't be there to protect her. And I was just scared, you know, because I know she has already had so many challenges with just being different. For me, the easiest and most difficult part was being able to do something like a Rolling Stone interview that basically laid out everything. For the most part, I didn't tell the people I knew, and the idea of going one by one seemed like really exhausting and overwhelming. So being able to be like, here, read this. If you have any more questions, I'm happy to try and answer them, but this is what I'm going through, and here you go. I mean, that was, that was a big advantage. The way we did the interview was split it the first day where we met, where I was just, you know, who I was or whatever, and then the next day I dressed in femme, just to see how that was. But I mean, I remember getting ready for the interview and coming out of the bathroom and like there's my daughter and my wife and like my daughter just was like a little taken back for a second, but then just kind of moved on, you know. Overall, it was very positive. It was um, it, it was great for me, um, especially because you know I kind of lack support at home. So f to get support from my friends was just everything for me. I think if I had been able to come out earlier, it for sure would have been a different experience. But it's not really worth worrying about how it could have been because it's how it was, and um, I've really never been happier since I came out. It's been a really positive experience. So. I think I got lucky with my therapist. My therapist saved my life. She really was the only person who said, yes, you are. It's been a really interesting trip. Um, I've actually found a lot of my voice and more of my voice coming out as trans. I, I have really been able to learn more about myself and explore what my identities are and what my identities mean. And that's also, you know, in speaking of Laura Jane Gray, someone who has been really inspirational in that um, and being able to see someone who's so loud and has such a huge voice and saying, you know, I don't give a f what anyone else has to say about it. This is who I am. So, 30 years of building up in my head to the decision to transition was, was pretty monumental. And I felt like once I got there and made the decision, came out, that it was kind of like, well, now what happens? <laughs> Where do I go from here? And there was really, there's no roadmap, you know? And it took me a second to realize that the person I was then isn't, isn't going to be the person that I end up. So. 
It was very daunting. I don't have a heart to match the one pretend to your finger. No more troubled sleep. There's a brave new world that's raging inside of me. I don't have a heart to match the one pretend to your finger. This too will soon slip out of reach. This too will soon come to an end. Would I be happier if I were a woman? I realized that I wasn't wrong. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm a trans person. I'm not going to pretend to be someone I'm not any longer. You can classify someone as trans, genderqueer, whatever you want. But when it comes down to it, they're just people.